Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent narcissist actors, directors, and producers. Here, we'll laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does, and they've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory. And this is May. Welcome back to another episode of The Cinema Rag. We hope you're doing well today on this Wednesday. Today, we're going to continue the actor versus actor series, in this case, actress versus actress, and talk about Jennifer Lawrence versus Emma Stone. If you're new to this Cinema Rag, I highly recommend you go through the back catalog and check out the 150 previous episodes, but certainly the other actor versus actor series that we've done, Christian Bale versus DiCaprio, Affleck versus Damon, Blanchett versus Kidman, Bullock versus Julia Roberts, and Hathaway versus Scarlett Johansson, and so forth. So the way this premise works is each of us are going to champion uh, a person, and we're going to just do a quick introduction as to why we think that person is better, go over their major works, then do a section where we put the other actress into the other actress's roles to see if they could have done that role. And then we look at their personal life, and at the end we determine who would we rather be. Because... The series is not about who's a more talented person. It's all about whose life would we rather have. And the reason we decided to do Lawrence versus Stone is that they have a lot in common. Uh, they're both roughly the same age. Emma Stone's 34, Lawrence is 32. They both recently had children and they're both recently married and they both have an Academy Award. And I think Jennifer Lawrence has one more a, a nomination, but... Either way. Actually, you know what? I think they both have two nominations. We can talk about that in a second, May. But so I will be championing the Stone, and May is going to be championing J Law. And we're going to get going. So, May, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. All right, all right, all right. Let's get going. <laughs> so here's my my intro to why Emma Stone I'd rather be. Okay. I think Emma Stone is an all-around better performer. I think that she can sing. She has demonstrated dramatic chops. She has de demonstrated comedic chops. And I think she has been less reliant on previous IP in previous, or I should say directorial talents to push her career. Or I think with Jennifer Lawrence, you look at Lawrence, her career has largely been catapulted by previous IP and by working with uh, uh, one particular director who's really benefited her. And if you take those two things away, I don't think Jennifer Lawrence it, would have as successful of a career as Emma Stone. And look, we can debate whether or not either of these women have a successful career, but I just think overall she's more talented. And I think in real life, I think Emma Stone would probably be a better hang and less pretentious than Jennifer Lawrence. Hmm. Well, I I think Jennifer Lawrence, I think she's actually got pretty good range. Um, she has demonstrated comedic chops and dramatic chops, especially, but she's also the great action star hero of the Hunger Games trilogy. So, um, and she's done a few independent films as well. So, yeah, I think she's actually got great depth. Um, but for some reason, her career has stalled for some reason because of her marriage, perhaps. She decided to become more of a wife. But she's coming back in movies like uh, Causeway. So, well, um, so, yeah, I think. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Gregory. So I did an episode on her her R-rated comedy that's coming out this summer called No Hard Feelings. I don't know where this is coming out in regards to that episode, because that episode is coming out the day that this movie's coming out. So No Hard Feelings is kind of a return to the trashy R-rated comedies of the Apatow world like 15 years ago, where essentially she plays a down and out kind of trashy girl who's hired by uh, parents of a kind of a nerdy incel to teach him the ways of the world. 
And mm -hmm. so this movie is supposed to be very raunchy and so forth. And so a lot, J-Law J is really relying a lot on this to resurrect her career. Because we'll talk about like both of these stars, I think careers certainly peaked 10 years ago. And both of them in recent years have, have, uh, have suffered. They both have no. suffered. And so she really needs this movie to work. And I want this movie to work because I miss R-rated comedies. And just given the cancel culture and also, also just I think the combination of Judd Apatow is no longer at his creative peak and there hasn't been like a new kind of godfather of R-rated comedies. You just haven't seen a lot of these in the last five years. So I do want this movie to do well, even though I'm sure. Okay. Well, in reference to Oscar, she actually has three Best Actress nominations. One for Winner's Bone. Mm -hmm. uh, two for Silver Linings Playbook, and three for American Hustle. I don't think American Hustle... Or actually, maybe American Hustle's supporting actors. Or, yeah, Amy Adams was nominated for Best Actor. That's one of the movies okay. I'll, eventually but I'll she, she has. But she has Oscar, that's for oh, sure. Right, right. And I think she, she's still very young. Yes. Okay, and I still right. think her career is going strong, yeah, unlike right. in the stone, so... Well, they're both both of their careers are, have been suffering recently. But let's go through each of their major works. I'll go first. So I think most people know Emma Stone's breakout was in Super Bad. She plays Jules, the kind of somewhat love interest to Jonah Hill. She gets her breakout in that movie. She has a small role in The House Bunny, which is the movie that uh, is Anna Faris's vehicle. I think really the first movie where she gets a lot of fame is going to be probably a combination of Zombie Land and Easy A. I think True. it is a, it's a very winning movie. I think she's very charming in that movie. It's kind of a modern spin on the Scarlet Letter, right? Where she pretends that she's sleeping with all these high school students and it gets out of hand. Zombieland is fine. You know, it's an ensemble movie with Jesse Eisenberg and Woody Harrelson. And of course, she did the sequel to that later on. But Crazy Stupid Love comes out a year later after Easy A. And I love that movie. I think it's a very charming movie with Ryan Gosling and Steve Carell and Julianne Moore. And I think, again, she just has those big red eyes and is very winning in that movie. That same year, she does The Help. Not a big fan of that movie. I I think that movie is one of those movies that's trying to be manipulative and is trying to elicit a reaction out of you. And, I mean, I think the performances are decent. Chastain's in it and Octavia Spencer and, and so forth. I just think that she's not that good in that movie. And she's got that really bad curly hair too, which which really doesn't help. Then she and starts, it's overrated. It's an overrated film. Yeah. I think it's an overrated film. I'm not a big fan of it. I think probably the best person in it is Bryce Dallas Howard. I think she plays the you know the bad girl pretty well. Mm -hmm. And then she does the Spider Man movies that with her then boyfriend Andrew Garfield. I have not seen either of those movies, so I'm really not going to comment on that. She does the Gangster Squad in 2013, which was kind of a flop. You know, it was like that that gangster movie with Ryan Gosling that kind of tanked. And then later, she does Birdman in 2014. Small role. Uh, we we both have our strong takes on this movie, and we both think the movie sucked, and she sucks in this movie. Then she does some small movies that flop. Aloha is that movie where it got a lot of bad run because she's supposed to play a Hawaiian Islander and clearly redhead. Emma Stone doesn't look anything like that. And I think that's a Cameron Crowe movie, if I'm not mistaken. That movie tanked, didn't do well at all. Then she does La La Land in 2016. We just talked about this movie in, not to spoil it, but top 10 movies that everybody loves that were like, why do people love this movie? That movie is mentioned in there. I'm not going to say what number it is. She wins the Academy Award for that. We both think that she should not have won it in that movie. Then she does Battle of the Sexes, which I think she does a good role. I don't know if you've seen this movie, maybe, where she plays Billie Jean, the um, the tennis player, and she's got to play against um, Steve Carell's character. I think she's pretty decent in that movie. Then she does 2018. She does The Favorite. This is a Yanis Lanthimos movie where she and Rachel Weisz and Olivia Coleman are all nominated. This movie, which I don't may I don't think you've seen, uh, essentially is a movie about Queen Anne in the early 1700s. And Olivia Coleman plays the queen, and Rachel Weiss is the established favorite, the sycophant. And then uh, Emma Stone plays the new uh, sycophant that comes onto the court and kind of ingratiates herself into the, the court and kind of pushes out uh, Rachel Weiss's character. 
And then, as I mentioned, 2019, she does Zombie Land. We're not going to mention that at all. Then she does 2021 Cruella. That movie was not well received. She plays, of course, Cruella DeVille. And really, that's the last major role that she did. She also did the voice work at the Crudes, but we typically don't talk about animation there. So she does have some upcoming work. She has Cruella 2 in pre production. And then in post production, she has a movie called The Poor Things which is about a woman called Bella Baxter, a young woman brought back to life by the brilliant and or unorthodox scientist. And she's also in post-production in a movie called, uh, I'm sorry, a, a movie called And, just A-N-D, and plot is kept under wraps. So that's her filmography. I think, you know, she's most famous for, I would say, Easy A, Crazy Stupid Love, La La Land, and maybe the favorite. And I said she got an Academy Award nomination for that. All right, tell us about J-Law. Well, J-Law, she pretty much got her start um, on TV. Uh, actually, both J-Law and Emma Stone were both on, on the medium, on medium with uh, Patricia Arquette, which is a little funny, I think, um, given that Patricia Arquette's that monotone actress that we were talking about the other day. Um but really, her breakout film, of course, is her Oscar-nominated performance in Winter's Bone of 2010. Um, she's also in The Beaver in 2011, with Jodie Foster and Mel Gibson. She's in X-Men First Class in 2011. Then in 2012, she does The Hunger Games. She also does Silver Linings Playbook in 2012. Yeah. Uh, she does um, Catching Fire in 2013, American Hustle in 2013, uh, X-Men Days of Future Past in 2014. She does a romantic, well, not really. Yeah, I guess a romantic drama, historical drama called Serena with Bradley Cooper again in 2014. Mm -hmm. So she likes to pair up with the same actors and director. Um, she's also been in Mockingjay's The Hunger Games Trilogy, Part 1 and 2, 2014 and 2015. She's been in Joy yeah. in 2015, X-Men Apocalypse in 2016, Passengers, which wasn't really very successful with uh, Chris Pratt in 2016. It's a drama romance. She's also in a film called Mother, in 2017, Red Sparrow in 2018, another X-Men film, Dark Phoenix 2019, and then Don't Look Up, which actually is a Netflix film with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in 2021. That was sort of a, of a flop, too. And, um, and also in 2022, she's in Causeway. But you had mentioned this, this big comedy that she's writing on for her upcoming Right. Films. What what was that again, Gregory? No hard feelings. It's a it's a it's a double entendre because it you know it has to do with rough uh, impotence whether or not this teenage boy that she's got a mentor can get it up. And mm -hmm. so it's it's a it's an R rated comedy. Is that her only upcoming film that I know of? Yeah, that, and it's going to be coming out in a month or so. Okay, so yeah, both of their careers are sort of teetering, you know. So we don't really know what what's going to happen. <laughs> Either okay. Like, Here's you know. my devil's advocate. Here's my argument why Emma Stone's better. And look, like we did on the the um, Anne Hathaway Scar Joe episode where I was champion Hathaway. Mm -hmm. At, by the end of it, I almost changed my tune. So this might be one of those where I changed my tune. But here's my my devil's advocate on J Law. If you take away previous IP in her work with with um, Russell David O. Russell, she's not successful. So look, Winner's Bone, she's great. She had no, pretty much no acting experience, very little, I should say, when she got that role. She's good in that. You know, she is good in that movie. And then from there, it's X-Men. She does like six of these movies where she plays Mystique, also made, you know, famous originally by uh, Rebecca Vane Stamos. <laughs> so she does those movies. And then, of course, she gets Hunger Games. And there's what, five of those, four of those? So if you, if you take away previous IP, because I don't think you can you can 
give uh, credit to actors and actors when they're in previous IP movies because it's the IP that's driving the people to see it. And so Hunger Games, for example, had a big following. The Suzanne Collins novels had a big following. And she's good in them. Don't get me wrong. I don't think she's bad in them. But a lot of it is because of the IP. And certainly with X-Men, you can't give her credit for X-Men movies because, A, it's a humongous previous IP. So all the comic book geeks are going to go see that movie. And, B, it's a humongous ensemble movie. So you really can't give credit to, as much as I love Fastbender, you can't give credit to Fastbender or McAvoy or Nicholas Hode or anyone that's in these movies because that's an ensemble IP. And if you look at her work with uh, Russell, David O. Russell, she's fine in Silver Linings Public. She should not have won an Academy Award for that role. We both have talked about this before. She's fine in that movie. She's fine. Definitely did not deserve the Academy Award. She's great in American Hustle. I love American yes. Hustle. All four of those actors are just over the top crazy. Right. Like Amy Adams and Christian Bale and, and so forth. She has a lot of great tension with Amy. Yes, absolutely. And she yeah. plays the floozy wife really well. I think, she, that, if anything, I think that is her best role as an American Hustle. Then she does right. Joy, which is another David O. Russell movie. That movie didn't do well. Then she's in Passengers, which I've seen. That's the movie where Chris Pratt and her are on a ship. He wakes up when he's not supposed to. And then he falls in love with the way she looks. So he wakes her up and then she finds out later and, and so forth. And then he does, she does mother, you know, with the exclamation point with her then boyfriend, Darren Aronofsky. That movie I have not seen, but that movie was just laughed at. Then she does Red Sparrow, which is that movie where she's like the Russian assassin. That movie tanked. So my argument is this. If you take away previous IP and her David O. Russell collaborations, she is not that good. She picks the right, or her agents, pick the right movie vehicles and the right one director to work on. And if you take that away, she's an emperor's so head, no clothes. No, she's not that bad because she does have Winter's Bone. And yeah, Winter's no, Bone no, is no. She's great at Winter's Bone. Uh, yeah, okay. Freshman performance. So, okay. you know, I, I think you're being too hard on her, really. Because, I mean, what actor out there has not really successful actor has not done previous ip you know i mean that, that's michelle williams that to me doesn't hold up your argument really. michelle williams doesn't do a lot of previous ip and hathaway hasn't done a lot of previous ip i mean there are actresses and actresses. yeah well she did she did uh les mis she was going to do Phantom of the Opera. She did yeah, Princess but, yeah, Diaries. Come on, Les Mis is come not on. She did. IP. She did The Devil Wears Prada. What are you talking about? She did. Les Mis is previous not IP. previous. Les Mis is not previous IP. Who's going to go yes, see? Yes, it Mis? is musical snobs. Musical people like musical. Yeah, people. that's previous IP. That's not previous IP when we talk yes, about. Yes, it is. It's a musical. It's an it's an intellectual property, it just like everything else. Yes. yes, you're right. On the strictest Please. definition. It Anne Hathaway has had her fair share. She did the Devil Wears Prada. You know? That was in previous IP. Yes, it was, is. It, it was a book before it was a, it was a, book, but I wouldn't it was a that novel before. before it was actually oh. a movie, Gregory. Okay. So I know that. I know that. But that, you can't, I you that. Can't, she's done Batman too. So you know, yeah, you can't say one movie, that, one that a, movie. Good, a good successful actress can't do. I mean, the most successful actresses of our time. Of our times have done previous IP. All That's right, all. so play devil's advocate for Emma Stone. Um, she's you know she's I guess she's done the Zombieland films and Easy A. Yeah, th those are great films, and she was in a very uh of uh, kind of an overacting mode. But I do think that Birdman won the Oscar for some reason. I guess. She got um, nominated, which so yes, and she was nominated for that for that small uh, performance that she made with Michael Keaton as her father. Um, and she also tries to 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 push the envelope, I think, by playing Cruella Deville. And a, uh, even though it may sure. not have, even though it may not have been successful at the box office, I still give her props for well, doing it. In yeah. short, though, I want you to play devil's advocate. You're championing J-Law, so as 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 you need to be the antagonist to Emma Stone. 
Why do you think Jim yeah, Cummings is a better athlete? I thought athlete you were saying devil's player? advocate as far as me championing or my championing. Her. I made a strong argument that Jennifer Lawrence, without previous IP and without oh, 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 I see, I see. is not that good. Oh, what, what's your yeah, talk on Emma Stone? As far as Emma Stone goes, I think that she's kind of a one-trick pony. Okay. Um, I think she she does a lot of romantic comedies that aren't that are okay. Um, and pretty much what you see is what you get with her. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I don't think she has a whole lot of range, to be honest. You know, maybe she did sing in La La Land, but so what? A lot of actors can sing. Okay, so, valid points. So what I would say there is Emma Stone, like, because this is not about who's, whose career is better. It's like, who would you rather be? We talked about this with Hathaway and ScarJo. I think Anne Hathaway is infinitely more beautiful than Scar Johansson. I think Jennifer Lawrence is definitely going to get more of the roles that you need for sexy because she is sexy. Now, I think she's had some plastic surgery done. If you go see the trailer for No Hard Feelings, you can tell her eyebrows at the minimum have been done, but she's had some work done. But Jennifer Lawrence has always had the big breast. I think she is more sexy. Emma Stone's always been kind of cute, right? Girl next door, sure. kind of Meg Ryan cute. So I think that in itself categorizes them into different roles they can both do comedy but you know what let's just go straight to the could they do these roles so i will go wait first. a minute i yeah. i, I want to say this too honestly is that emma stone is actually blonde she's not a redhead she's a natural blonde oh kind of like amy adams right not a natural redhead okay so here we go i want you to let's be honest here could jennifer lawrence have done easy a yes i agree could Jennifer Lawrence have done Crazy Stupid Love? Yes. Yes, I agree. Could she have done The Help? Mm, I don't think she would have wanted to do it. Well, that a question of would, but if they she were, could do it, she could do it. Yeah. I think I don't know. I I I don't know what the Southern accent. I I don't I don't know. I'm I'm fifty fifty. I think she could she could employ a Southern accent. Okay. Could she have done the Spider Man movies? Um, well, who would be better? Who would be better in these roles? I Emma guess. Stone is better. Emma Stone would be. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. What about uh, La La Land? Uh, maybe. Well, Jennifer Lawrence can't sing, as far as I know. So, I mean, that takes her out of the she consideration. Could, she could take voice lessons. <laughs> well, you got to take a lot of them if you can't sing well to be able to sing. <laughs> Um, you haven't seen the favorite, so I'm not going to ask you to to comment on that. Uh, what about Cruella? No, I don't think Lawrence? Jennifer Lawrence could do. Cruella. Jennifer Lawrence could not have done Cruella. No. Okay. Uh, I think uh, maybe, but no. I, th I think she could have done it, but probably Emma Stone would have done a better job. All right, ask me with uh, J Law's work. Uh, J Law. Uh, let's see. Could um... Emma Stone. Emma Stone have done Mother. I've not seen Mother. Okay. Could let's Emma start, Stone, let's start with her early stuff. Could Emma Stone have done Passengers? Yes. Okay. Could Emma Stone have done American Hustle? No. Because that role requires you to be very sexy and sensual and talking fast. And I don't think Emma Stone in that role would have been horribly miscast. Yeah, so and that's the thing. J Law is pretty good with those accents, those American accents. I would say so, but she's not done British accents as far as I know, whereas Emma Stone has done British accents, like for example, on the favorite, and she's pretty convincing. Um, let's start at the beginning of J Law's career. So Winner's Bone. Could have Emma Stone done Winner's Bone? Uh not with the same intensity. I don't think so. I think J Law would have been better in that one. Okay, well, could Emma Stone have done uh X-Men? Mystique. It would have been believable because Mystique is sexy and Emma Stone's not sexy. Okay. Uh, J-Law's got the curvy body. I guess. But what about Emma Stone? Could she have done the Hunger Games trilogy? I think she could have if she was getting in shape and did all the action and stuff like that. Um, she come Because at that point, she's kind of well-known and she's too sweet, cutesy, easy A. So I mm -hmm. think it maybe would have been harder to believe. Whereas... Jennifer Lawrence is coming off Winner's Bone, which is a pretty kind of dramatic, intense role. And so I don't think people would have had the baggage uh, of her. Whereas Emma Stone coming in as Katniss, 
I think would have been bad for the franchise. So could she have done Hunger Games? Yes, but I don't think she would have been good as as good of a role in that. Okay, but how about this one? Could Emma Stone have done the Silver Linings Playbook? I think so. I don't yeah, think there's anything I, I special about Jennifer Lawrence in that movie. There's nothing special about that role. No, no. no. American That's Hustle, she couldn't have done. And Joy, I don't think she couldn't have done. And Passengers, I think she could have done. Because Passengers is, it's it's not a horrible movie, but there's nothing special about Jennifer Lawrence in that movie. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look up personal life. So Emma Stone, you know, I love it when when actresses uh, have a pretty boring uh, personal life. She's only been with a few men and she's always had a good reputation of being a good girl, uh, being a nice girl. But she dated Karen Culkin, who's probably most famous now for being uh, Roman Roy on the HBO show Succession. They dated for a few years and then she was with Andrew Garfield when they started doing the Spider-Man movies. And they were together for five, four or five years. And then she met her current husband, Dave McCrary. That's what she and ScarJo have in common. They both date, date SNL guys. But ScarJo at least is dating the guy from Weekend Update and the head writer of SNL, Colin Jost. Whereas Emma Stone is uh, married the segment director, Dave McCrary. And oh. uh, it was in 2017. They got engaged in 2019. And uh, eventually they... Uh, Married in 2020, then they had their child in 2021. Louise Jean is the name of the daughter. And see, this is one of the reasons I like Emma Stone. Because Emma Stone marries, no, no offense, but it's kind of like the, uh, who's Julia Roberts? Is Danny Motor. You know, Danny Motor was like, what, was he cameraman or key grip or something like that? She yeah. was a segment director on SNL. I, I give her credit for that. I think that's, I think that, again, goes back to what kind of like, the, the nice girl, kind of down-home, earnest quality of of her. Now, tell us about J-Law. Well, I think J-Law is just as earnest in real life. I think that she gets a lot of a bad rap just because she is considered a sexy person, I guess. But she's actually a pretty good girl. Um, the only co-star she's really dated is Nicholas Holt. For a long time. Uh, yeah. Long time. And so she's... She's a long-term person, and um, her her husband, his name is Cook Maroney, and yeah. he, I think he's an art dealer or something, right. or a gallery person, um, but they uh, were first linked in 2018 and by a mutual friend, and then she married him in 2019, and she's had a pretty uh, quiet life. Um yeah, they have a kid together. And he's really not that much older, you know. He's he's only about six years older than her. So All right. I I hear that they have wedded bliss. So. That's good. I mean, we want that. So they're very yeah. similar. Like they both just have a kid. They they're both recently married. So here's here are the two big questions that I have. You know, the final question is going to be, but the the penultimate question is, twenty years from now, and I don't know if we included either of these actresses in the up the two part series to have these actors reach their peak. But 20 years from now, who's going to have the better career between these two, or if either of them, or both of them? Well, I think Jennifer Lawrence is going to still be around mm -hmm. in 20 years. Because I think she she probably does want to, you know, cement her Oscar stardom. So... Mm -hmm. I think she will be around. For some reason, I just think that uh, Emma Stone is past her peak, but she will still be in film and television. Sure, yeah. I mean, they'll always find a place on television. I kind of agree with you here, May. I think that Jennifer Lawrence, given her height and her sex appeal, and, you know, she does have acting chops, given these things, and she's demonstrated like an American hustle in Winter's Bone that she can act. I think that she has a better chance of having a successful career in the next 20 years. Emma Stone relies a lot on that pixie dream girl, Zoe Deschanel kind of thing, where just, you know, the big eyes and the youthful exuberance. And she's 34. And as you get older, you know, she's going to lose that. And yeah. Really, you know, she's in the favorite and the favorite. She doesn't really use those things to her advantage. And she's very good in that movie. So I think if, if I had to guess 
which of these two actresses is likely to get Academy Award nomination or win in the future? Certainly it's going to be Jennifer Lawrence. True. I think she's actually the Oscar darling still. See, okay, and here's my, I guess, penultimate, penultimate question until we get to, the, of course, the last question is, J-Law, like 10 years ago, you remember she was stumbling on the way to the red carpet or on the way right. to the Academy Award, and she's always had this vibe of, oh, you know, I fart and I pick my nose and I'm just like you and I'm like everybody else. Do you <laughs> think that is authentic or do you think that is all PR so people will like her? No, I think it's authentic. I think that's just the way she is. She's She's like really good friends with Amy Schumer, so... Yeah, they're both really kind of gross in some some regards. So, um, but yeah, I think that's just the way she acts. So. Okay, well, I I think I'm a little more cynical. I think some of that is I think she is like naturally boorish, and I'm one of the guys, and I sit and eat Cheetos and fart and all these things. But I think some of that is calculated either by her or by the PR team. Where I think I'm. Hey. Still- I think Emma Stone is just authentic. I think she's just a down-to-earth good girl. And I think either she won't get the roles or she's just going to retire from Hollywood eventually and just have some kids and just... I think that's the type of person she is. She just doesn't really care as much. I think J-Law uh, is is going to stay around in Hollywood. And I think she's a little more... has a little more veneer and pretentiousness to her than I think than Emma Stone. She does, but overall, I think she is basically a boring good girl. In the uh, end, so. I, I don't know. I don't I think know. I don't I, see. I've never seen her like, you know, try to go out and get the guys. You know, and try to. I be just. I think guys. she's. I think she's. Uh, she's got a little more BS in her. I think. I think like if you were to meet her in person, she's kind of like Alec Baldwin. He's like, I. I don't think she'd be nice in person. Like I think if. If two people <laughs> went after her to get her autograph, I think Emma Stone is more likely to be nicer. I think there is a certain a certain sense of BS behind Jay Law's unlike everybody else kind of routine. All right. Uh, um, perhaps. Perhaps there's a, an edge to her. Yeah. Okay, final question. Edge. Final question. Mm-hmm. Who has who's more talented or anything like that? Whose life would you rather have? Mm. That's hard to say. I I can go first. Okay. I'll go with Emma Stone. I think Emma Stone's life I'd rather have. I think Jennifer Lawrence does have a better chance of getting more Academy Award nominations. She has more Academy Award nominations. Um, I think probably objectively she is more beautiful than Emma Stone. But I think that Emma Stone is more down to earth, is less likely to have addictions, is less likely to divorce her husband. And to me, Jennifer Lawrence, when I when I smell her, I smell a certain amount of BS pretentiousness Hollywood in her. And I think I just personally would rather be Emma Stone. And like, to be fair, both of these women are, are friends. They're they're friends with each other. You know, they're they're, they're, they're not frenemies. They're friends. How about I, that? I personally would just rather be Emma Stone, even though I might not get as many Academy Award nominations. And like I said, my career might not be as great. I might do television for a little while and just move to upstate New York with Amanda Seyfried or Alicia V. Cantor and Fassbender moving to Portugal. I might, you know, I think she might have that life, but I just think she's, she's got her crap more together where I think Jennifer Lawrence, especially with the plastic surgery she's done for no hard feelings. I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't know. I just sense a train wreck. In what plastic movie. surgery? I don't, I, like I mentioned, like if you see the trailer for the movie, she's had some work done on her face, I think. Really? Anyway, okay. So who would you rather be? Cause we need to finish this up. I think I, I guess I'd rather be Emma Stone just because she's more understated. Um, she is less likely to. I mean, I think she is more likely to be just a nice person too, yeah. because I do agree that there is somewhat of an edge with with Jennifer Lawrence. But I think that Jennifer Lawrence, for some reason, feels a lot more pressure to get that Oscar more than Emma Stone. So I would rather be sitting pretty like Emma Stone and in a house, domestic bliss or whatever with children. So, yeah, I mean, I think Emma Stone has had her career and she has her Oscar too. So for whatever reason, even though I don't agree with it, but um, yeah, I, I guess I would prefer Emma Stone's life style to, to J-Law's. 
And we'll see um, whether or not No Hard Feelings does well. I think it's important for the R-rated comedies that it does well. And certainly it's important for J-Lo's career because she has not had a hit since 2015. She has not had a hit since uh, the, the Hunger Games movies and the David O. Russell movies, which all kind of reached their peak in the mid-2015s. So she needs to demonstrate that she can open a movie that's not previous IP. So there is pressure for her for this movie to do relatively well. And I just yeah. think it's like more pressure than Emma Stone does in the future. And again, like you said, I think maybe she puts it on herself. She doesn't have to put that pressure on herself. She could be like Amanda Seyfried and just retire to upstate New York with your husband and kids and occasionally do roles here and there. Um, I think just think in closing, I'd rather be Emma Stone. I just think that she's more. I just think that J-Law has those three Oscar nominations that are very important to her since she was very young. Uh, and she just probably wants to continue on. And so, yeah, I guess the pressure yeah. is on her. Yeah, I she think she's more ambitious. On. And I think she she is more ambitious and more yeah. has what she perceives to be more to prove. And I think that's why she's going to push really hard. All right. But maybe don't, don't, okay. But don't get me wrong. I do think she's probably a nice person in real life. Come on. I don't think she's a bitch. I don't. Well, I mean, I, I don't know either way. I just like all I can do is from what I sense. And who Emma Stone marries, she essentially marries a nobody. And I just think Emma Stone <laughs> is just more in earnest and, and not, uh, I think. But an art dealer, that's okay. Yeah, but that's part of that pretentiousness, you know. Oh, no, oh my gosh, you think all art dealers are pretentious. <laughs> all right, man, I got to run. I appreciate it. Okay, Gregor. this Wednesday. Okay. Take care. Yeah. Thanks for listening to The Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.